So how do you pick the perfect wine to go with pasta? In this video, I'm gonna share with you the secrets to pairing wine with pasta that you will never hear on any other YouTube channel. Wine is great by itself. Pasta is delicious by itself. But when you choose the right wine to go with the right pasta, your tasting experience will suddenly go from 10 to 100. In this video, I'm gonna share with you 19 ways to pair pasta with wine. I'm gonna literally show you the pasta dishes I personally cooked, which wine to pair with them, and why they go so well together so you can do the same thing at home. I recommend you save this video and come back to watch again and again when you need some pasta and wine pairing inspiration. And at the very end, I'll show you some of my favorite wine reserves that go great with some specialty pasta dishes. So make sure you stick around for that. Make sure you hit the subscribe button below so you don't miss out on any new Italian wine videos and much, much more. I'm Tony Margiata. Welcome to this class and let's get started. Okay, so the first dish we're gonna look at is a light pasta dish. Um, it is called linguine with shrimp in a zucchini sauce. There is no cream in this whatsoever. Um, it's a very, very light zucchini sauce. It's just the shaved zucchini with, uh, with garlic and olive oil and some salt. Very, very basic. And we are going to pair this with a Trebbiano d'Abruzzo from the Rapino Small Estate Winery. Again, very simple dish. Three simple ingredients for the most part, zucchini, garlic, basil, and then the shrimp. And so because that sauce is so light and so simple, you need sort of a light and simpler wine to go with it, which is why I picked Trebbiano d'Abruzzo. Trebbiano d'Abruzzo is a classic Italian white wine. This particular wine sits at 12% alcohol. So that is definitely on the lighter side. And it's not, um, it doesn't have really any dominating powerful flavors. It's, it's actually quite an elegant wine with some details, some citrus, uh, some sea salt, a little bit of floral, but it's just a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and it won't overpower the delicate zucchini sauce. You know, if you were to pair that with a Chardonnay and you go to eat these two things together, all you're gonna taste is the Chardonnay. You're not gonna be able to taste this beautiful zucchini sauce that you made. So you need a little bit of a lighter, more delicate wine to go with it. All right, let's go to the next wine and pasta pairing. Orecchiette al pesto di pistacchi, okay? This is the little ear pasta that is made with a pesto sauce, but this is not a normal pesto sauce. It's made with pistachios. And so when you do pesto with pistachio, really the only difference between a regular pesto and, and the one with the pistachio is that there's lots of pistachios in it. Um, a typical pesto sauce is very strong on the basil side of things and they use the pine nuts just as a thickener. Whereas with the pesto di pistacchi, the real dominant flavor in this sauce are the pistachios. So what you get is sort of a fatty and creamy texture from this particular dish. And so in order to balance that fatty and creaminess from the pistachios, you need a wine that is sort of on the fruitier side and or crisp side to balance it. For example, again, I'll use the example of a Chardonnay. An oaky Chardonnay would be a horrible pairing with this, with this particular dish because you know, the main characteristic of an oaky Chardonnay is sort of that buttery texture. And so that buttery texture is gonna fight with the sort of creamy texture of the pesto pistachio. So it just wouldn't work well together. You need something um, with some fruit and sort of that crispy acidity on the back to sort of slice through the creaminess of the pesto. And so I chose this wine, which is the Castel Luciniano Bianco, which it happens to be 100% Catarato, a native Sicilian grape that only grows in Sicily. Uh, this particular wine is medium bodied, very aromatic, lots of uh, seductive perfumes of, of peach and citrus and a little bit of salt from the Mediterranean. And it's, uh, it's got a nice crisp finish, which slices through uh, nicely. Again, you don't, in this case, this is also still somewhat of a delicate dish. It's not particularly heavy. And so 
I would not recommend a super full-bodied white wine like a Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand, for example. I would, I would definitely not do anything like that. This is sort of up in the middle. And quite frankly, this is more of a, a regional pairing more so than anything in the sense that uh, pistachios are sort of a specialty in Sicily. So you will find pistachios in a lot of uh, Sicilian pasta dishes. If you believe in the concept of regional pairing, which, which I do, it's one of my favorite ways to pair uh, wine with food. A Sicilian pasta dish with a Sicilian wine is a match made in heaven. Let's go to the next one. Now, we're gonna to start to get a little bit more complex here. This is a pasta dish that has several seafoods from the sea scallops, shrimp, and even crab. Because where I live in, in, uh, on the East Coast of the United States, uh, crab is definitely in season in the summer. And so I paired that with, from the same winery as the last one, the Castelluccio Miano Chara Bianco, which happens to be the reserve. It's the, the crew, the best of the best, 100% uh, Catarato. It comes from one of the oldest vineyards and one of the highest vineyards above sea level in all of Sicily, about 3,000 feet above sea level. And up there, they have a plot of ancient Albarello vines, which have been known for centuries, going all the way back to Roman times as producing very, very high quality grapes. It just happens to be really hard work to cultivate them, but the Castelluccimiano vineyard is very happy to do so. Now, this pasta dish is very complex. You've got three different sources of protein, uh, all from the sea, but sort of when you mix that together with olive oil, some garlic, uh, also cooking with white wine, you've got a pretty complex seafood dish. And of course, you need a white wine to go with it, but this time we need to go with a white wine that is also equally complex and busy as it were. You know, the more ingredients that you have in a dish, the more complex the wine should be, which is a super important tip. And so this particular wine is very, very complex. Lots of different fruit notes, apple, uh, peach, citrus. It has a super long and persistent finish. So it wouldn't go as well with a delicate dish like the pasta with zucchini, for example. You need something a little bit more robust. And so uh, this dish happens to be also very salty and savory, as you can imagine, right? Coming from the shrimp and the crab. In order to balance that, you definitely wanna go with a wine that's got more fruit. So you've got salty on one side and then fruit on the other. You put it together, it's fantastic. And so the Castelluccimiano Chara definitely has a lot of fruit in that wine. Let's move on to the next one. Here's another seafood dish. And by the way, we will be getting to the reds later. We're just, uh, we're just dealing with white pastas for now. Uh, we're doing 19 pasta dishes. So, you know, we've got plenty of time for the reds. This is another interesting regional pairing. This happens to be one of my personal uh, favorite pasta dishes in the world. This recipe comes from the island of Sardinia. It's pasta alla Carlo Fortina. And basically it is, you use le trofie pasta with tuna, you use pesto, cherry tomatoes, onion, and of course, extra virgin olive oil. And we are pairing it with an authentic Sardinian white wine coming from the small estate, the Ataruya estate. This is their Vermentino di Sardegna, which they call Dorvene. Dorvene literally means, means uh, veins of gold. Vermentino is the sort of epitome of white wine in Sardinia. It's a very full body structured wine. And you certainly need that with this very, very complex uh, seafood dish. You know, it's, it's a very hearty seafood dish because of the meatiness of the tuna. There's lots of ingredients in here. So the more ingredients a dish has, the more complex the wine needs to be. And so because this dish is so complex and so hearty, you'll need an equally big wine to balance that. But at the same time, you don't want a, a wine that's too fruity to fight with that complexity. 
And so the Vermentino, the Sardinia, is a is a perfect match because it's it's fruity but not too fruity, and at the same time it has this dry, crisp, big structured finish on the back, which really balances itself well with this big hearty seafood dish. So I figured I'd throw in a nice rosé pairing, and this is what we call gnocchi di ricotta. Now. For those of you who have heard of gnocchi, it's typically made with potatoes. This particular dish is made with ricotta, cheese, and flour and some egg. And it's a very, very simple dish once you've made the, uh, the gnocchis. But this is just put in a butter sauce with sage, just butter, sage, and some salt. And that is it. This is a great sort of light summer dish. And I decided to pair that with this rosé from Abruzzo, again from the Rapino Small Estate Winery. This is a Cerasuolo d'Abruzzo, and Cerasuolo uh, literally means pink in Italian, as referred to the pink hues of a rosé wine. And it's, it is the specialty rosé in the Abruzzo region. It has its own appellation. It's a DOC. It really creates a nice contrast to the very basic dish of the gnocchi di ricotta. You know, th this particular dish is not jam-packed with flavor. It's actually rather, rather delicate and simple on, on the flavor side of things. And so to sort of make things a little bit more vivacious, to make, to make your palate a little bit more excited, we throw in this medium, medium plus bodied, Cerasuolo uh, d'Abruzzo to sort of keep things interesting. There's lots of contrast there because the, this particular Cerasuolo has lots of bright red fruits. It's got lots of floral notes and then a super crisp finish on the end, very dry. It works very, very well. I really enjoyed that particular lunch. And, and I'll mention uh, right now that it, one recurring theme you'll hear me say throughout this pasta and wine video is that contrast is super important. You know, you've heard the old saying, opposites attract. It's the same thing with wine and food pairings, okay? So you have that saltiness versus fruitiness is sort of a opposites attract uh, sort of a concept. Now we're moving into the red wine pairings with pasta. No more whites and rosés going forward. We're just going to stick to red wine pairings going forward. And the first pasta dish is sort of one of the most simple Italian pasta dishes out there. But if you speak to the Italians, they'll tell you, if you don't know how to make pasta aglio e olio, uh, you don't know how to cook. So it really is the most simple dish, but it's also the easiest one to mess up. So that's basically just pasta with garlic and oil. It's, it's up to you if you like uh, spices. But another classic topping for this particular dish is pepperoncino, or hot red pepper. And it's completely optional, completely up to you. We're going to pair that with an ayanico. Now, this is made by the Antico Borgo estate in the Campania region in Taurasi, Provincia di Avellino. And it's 100% ayanico. And for those of you who know Ayanico, you would say, whoa, 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 Ayanico is a big, bold, powerful wine. You know, wouldn't that overpower this, uh, this particular dish? And my, my response is, generally speaking, yes, like if it was a reserve or something like that. But this particular wine, this Irpinia DOC that, that this producer makes, this is at 13% alcohol. If you can find a uh, a sort of a, a dry red at 13% alcohol probably would pair very, very well with this. I also sprinkled quite a bit of Parmigiano Reggiano on this. That's really what makes it so special to have that red wine because obviously red wine and cheese go very well together. And it's really that, that match right there of the Parmigiano with the red wine. And then at 13%, it's sort of, dare I say, light enough that it, it still allows the, uh, this particular pasta dish to show off its savory flavors. Like I would never pair this dish with a Cabernet Sauvignon, for example, a full body 14% plus wine. It would be just too big and overpowering. You, you wouldn't even taste the pasta. It doesn't make sense to me. 
I'm sure you've heard wine educators say, oh, just drink what you like. No, 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 no. If you want to take your tasting experiences from 10 to 100, you've got to balance the, uh, the wine with the pasta. So even though maybe you personally like fuller bodied wines, you're not going to do yourself any favor pairing it with a sort of a more delicate pasta dish. The next one, tortellini filled with spinach and cheese. This is super easy and super fast. You can buy these at the store. You boil them and then just drizzle some olive oil over them and some Parmigiano Reggiano and, and you're good to go. A very, very fast lunch or dinner. And because this is still, once again, a lighter pasta dish, you know, because there's not a rich, heavy sauce to go with it, you want to go with, if you're going to have a red wine, definitely want to go with a lighter red wine. And so I chose this Dolcetto wine from the Battaglio estate. This is a micro producer in the Piemonte region near Barbaresco. And this Dolcetto is, is absolutely fantastic. The producer makes about 3,000 bottles a year of this wine. And it's just, it's, it, it, what, what's so fascinating about this wine is that it's super light and yet you get this full mouth feel on the palate. Bright red fruits, some floral, and a super clean and beautiful finish. And it's just a easy everyday drinking wine. It's such a high quality and it's so underrated. No one knows about this wine. And it sits on the shelf for like 19 or $20. It's, it's a steal. And it's a perfect pairing with this tortellini with spinach and cheese. Let's go to the next pairing. Okay, now we're going to look at, this is called pappardelle ai funghi. So this is pappardelle pasta with mushrooms, just olive oil, a little white wine, some onion, maybe a little bit of garlic if you want to, and some parsley. And you've got this super full, rich, and savory pasta dish. Now, this is pappardelle. This particular pappardelle is made with egg noodles. For this dish, which is quite uh, robust and earthy, um, I am pairing a Barbera d'Alba. Now, Barbera is also a native Italian grape, only grows in Italy. There are some other countries in the world that grow it, but the best Barbera wines come from the Piemonte region, which is where this comes from. Again, this is from the Battaglio small estate winery in the Piemonte region. They make 6,000 bottles of this particular Barbera. And what I like about it is that it's full bodied without being heavy. It's very aromatic and it has lots of uh, blackberry fruit notes. It's a very fruit forward wine, no tannins, and it's got high acidity. And so basically, again, here we go again. It's another great contrast pairing. You've got the savory flavors coming from the mushrooms, and then you're contrasting that with beautiful, ripe, lush blackberry fruits from the wine. So it's a, it's a great balance. I would say mushroom dishes in general happen to go very well with Barbera d'Alba. Next dish. This is pappardelle alla salsiccia. So again, we're going with pappardelle egg noodles with sort of like little tiny balls of sausage. And all you do is you can either buy or make your own sausage and you just break the casing and pull the meat out of the casing and make these little sort of meatballs. And you just toss them in and cook them in olive oil with onion, uh, maybe a little bit of garlic if you want. And of course, you could probably sprinkle a little bit of uh, parsley if you'd like. So this is going to be, compared to the pappardelle ai funghi, the pappardelle alla salsiccia is going to be a much more complex dish because of the pork that's in this particular dish. More fat, more flavor, more savoriness. And we're going to pair that with a pericone. Now, what is pericone? Pericone is the oldest grape from Sicily. It's native to Sicily, it doesn't grow anywhere else on the planet, not even mainland Italy. It's been growing there for about 2,500 years. It's a unique grape varietal that historically most people thought was just a blending grape. So they used to make bulk juice. They used to call it vino da taglio, cutting wine as it was called. And they used to export it to France and Northern Italy to be blended with their fine wines of the world, which I find very amusing. You know, when they had a weak vintage, Pericone was the perfect blending grape because 
Pericone is known for having lots of color and lots of alcohol to sort of boost an otherwise very weak vintage. It was only about 10, 12 years ago, dating back to the early 2000s, where they discovered that this particular winery discovered that you could make a fine wine with this varietal. So this is the first single varietal wine of Pericone in Sicily. Now there are dozens of other producers that are following the path that this particular producer has laid for everyone else. But this is the best Pericone in Sicily by far. Full bodied, lots of uh, forest fruits. It always has some spices on the back and the finish always seems to have this little sort of coffee earthy note on the back, which is makes it a very, very complex wine. And so because this is a complex dish in the sense that the flavors are very, very intense, you know, the onions with sausage and garlic really requires a, a powerful wine and pericone is the wine to do that. Let's take a look at another one here. This is, this is a very famous dish, pasta alla carbonara, which is pasta with egg and pig cheeks guanciale as they say in Italian but you could also use pancetta if you choose if you cannot find guanciale which is more traditional uh, you can certainly use pancetta so now this is a very rich pasta dish as you can imagine you know it's got the egg yolk and it's got pork in it so it's very rich very fatty very heavy you need a powerful bold wine to go with it and so I'm recommending a Canonao from the island of Sardinia from the Atabruya estate, six to 7,000 bottles produced annually by hand. Uh, this is the crew of Canonal, one of the best of the best out there. And it is big, full-bodied, powerful, bold, beautiful, ripe red fruits and spices on the back. Canonal is infamous for having a little bit of heat on the back. They typically tend to be a little bit more alcoholic than other wines. But believe me, you pair that with this super rich and heavy wine and it's the perfect balance right there. Next dish. Remember when we looked at the gnocchi di ricotta in the butter sauce? Now we're going to do a gnocchi di ricotta with tomato sauce. Okay, so you can do that as well. And, and by the way, this is sort of interchangeable. If you want to do gnocchi with potato, feel free to do that. I know that this is a a pasta and wine pairing class, but uh, you know, gnocchi uh, uh, really, really sort of fits in. With this gnocchi di ricotta al sugo, I'm gonna pair it with a Nero d'Avola from Sicily, from the Castel Luciano estate. And so tomato sauce now, this is where things get a little, a little dicey with pairing pasta with wine. You would think because it has a red sauce, automatically you go with the red wine. But consider this, tomato sauce is technically sweet and sour together, which ultimately creates something very rich. Now, the longer you cook the tomato sauce, the less sour it becomes and the more sweet it becomes, right? And then if you cook it too much, of course, then you end up burning it, you lose all the flavors. But this sweet and sour combination is a very rich and complex combination. So in order to create contrast, what you need is a high acid wine to cut through that powerful combination. And so most Italian reds typically do have high acidity, which is not a problem. And that's why Italian wines are really some of the best in the world because of their natural high, high acidity. This sort of thing can't be duplicated. It's, it's a gift of where the Italian peninsula is located on planet Earth. Just that perfect combination of climate, landscape, the varietals, you get this very vivacious acidity in, in Italian wines, which makes Italian wines the most exciting wines in the world. And that's why they pair better with red sauce dishes than any other wine out there. Without that high acidity, what would a wine taste like? Well, it would be, it would taste flat. So just imagine, just imagine drinking a flat soda that's actually how a lot of commercial wines taste to me, especially from the new world. A lot of new world wines taste a little flat to me because I'm so used to drinking Italian wines all the time, which are very vivacious from that acidity. And so this is a great pairing. Nero Davola with gnocchi di ricotta. Pasta al pomodoro. 
this is, you know, a classic Italian dish. It's just pasta with tomato sauce. You know, we're back to recommending another Ayanico. It's actually the same Ayanico that I recommended earlier in this video from the Antico Borgo Estate. It's a very versatile wine at 13% with nice acid and it's just a great everyday Italian drinking wine that you should definitely have on your table. I mean, if you're the type of person that's always drinking Chianti, I definitely recommend that you add Ayanico to your wine rack. Uh, you won't be sorry. Here's another rich and complex dish, Rigatoni alla Matriciana. Alla Matriciana is sort of the opposite of the Carbonara in the sense that this is a red sauce pasta dish with pig cheeks, guanciale, or you can certainly use pancetta if that's all you have access to. So you need a robust wine to go with this, of course. So I'm recommending the Montepulciano d'Abruzzo from the Rapino estate. Most commercial Montepulcianos might not have quite the robustness needed to pair with this particular dish, but I know this wine very, very well. It's full-bodied, ripe, rich red fruits on the front with spices on the back. The finish is actually even fuller bodied than the front, which, which makes it a fascinating, fascinating, delicious wine. And it pairs beautifully with this Rigatoni alla Matriciana. Notice the, uh, the Parmigiano Reggiano that I sprinkled on top. It's, you know, cheese and red wine. It's fantastic. Now, another thing I'll, I'll mention real quick is it's not so important as to the type of pasta that you use. The type of pasta doesn't really influence which wine you're going to pair. It, what really matters are the other ingredients that you use to make the sauce that goes with that pasta. That's how you're going to choose the right wine, at least 95% of the time. Check out this. This is a really cool dish. I was actually, this is actually something I did not personally cook. I was at a fantastic restaurant in Manhattan drinking this particular wine. This is ravioli stuffed with osso buco. Awesome, awesome dish. As you can see here, the sauce is really quite rich with a little bit of rosemary on top. And we paired that with a canonal from Sardinia. This was a fairly rich dish. It needed a big wine to go with it. Canonal goes really well with rich red sauce dishes. And so I threw it in as a pairing and it was fantastic. This is, dare I say, a little bit lighter for a canonal. Uh, and that's because half of it was aged in steel and half in oak to sort of create a more of a fresher, younger sort of canonal, not too robust. So it works beautifully with this particular dish. Now we're gonna get to even more rich. This is even richer. This is probably one of the richest pasta dishes that I've shown you today. This is rigatoni al ragu daniello. This is rigatoni pasta in a lamb ragu sauce. So we're talking about lots of ingredients here, carrots, uh, celery, onion, tomato, garlic, onion, and lamb meat, which is very, very strong. And so you need a powerful wine to go with it. So I'm going back to Sicily again, and I'm recommending the Castellucci Miano Pericone again, which is a powerful wine, lots of acidity, lots of complexity, long finish, and it, it can hold its own. It was a fantastic dinner that night. Uh, staying in the complexity world here, this is a epitome regional pairing from the island of Sardinia. This is called Maloredus. And Maloredus is basically this particular pasta. It's a short pasta with little, little curves sort of tattooed into it. And it's in a pork sausage ragu, okay? So of course, we're gonna pair that with a Canonal from Sardinia. Big, full-bodied, robust, lots of complexity, red fruits, floral herbs like rosemary and the Mediterranean bushes, which, which are called macchie mediterranea, uh, which are sort of these sweet, savory bushes that you'll smell if you're ever in Italy uh, in the countryside. So that complexity uh, marries very well with a very rich and complex dish, of pork sausage in a red sauce. And of course, we use pecorino cheese, sheep's milk, which is even stronger, right? So you definitely need 
a big full-bodied complex wine like a Canonal from Sardinia. Uh-oh, what do we got here? The classic Italian-American pasta dish, spaghetti and meatballs. More specifically, we've got homemade tagliatelle paired with some meatballs. And I'm starting to get fancy now. These last three wines are, are reserves. These are very, very serious, serious wines here. I'm pairing it with a Taurasi Reserva from the Antico Borgo estate. Taurasi is a small medieval village in the Campania region, not far from Naples, where they make this 100% Ayanico based wine, which is one of the most complex Ayanico wines the world has ever seen. And it is age worthy for decades. It was also known as the Roman emperor's favorite wine grape. So if it was good enough for them, it's good enough for us as far as I'm concerned. While I will admit maybe this wine is just a touch too powerful for this dish, it was nonetheless delicious. So I would ask you to not look at pairing uh, pasta and wine as a, as a either or sort of thing, but there's always this sort of gray area where things can work together nicely. Next dish, lasagna. You, did you think I was, not, I was gonna leave out lasagna? It's one of my favorite pasta dishes. And so lasagna is a very complex pasta dish due to all of its ingredients and layers. It's a meat sauce. Our family tends to use mozzarella, although the, there are a couple different traditional ways. I mean, there's a million ways to make lasagna. You know, lasagna coming from Sicily is probably gonna have ricotta in it because ricotta is very important to Sicilian cuisine. But then if you have lasagna in the north, they use the creamy bechamel. So what you'll find a lot though in the south of Italy, particularly in the Campania area and Molise, where my family's from, they, they tend to stick with mozzarella. And so because of this complex, heavily layered pasta dish, we are going to pair it with an equally complex wine. This is the Gran Cru of Pericone from the Castellucci Miano estate. They nicknamed the bottle Maravita, which is named after an anonymous farmer who was known a long, long time ago for having cultivated the finest Pericone grapes. And this particular winery purchased his plot and make the wine from that plot. And that's what you're looking at right there. Pericone is actually somewhat of an age-worthy wine. We, we, we've yet to know how far it can age, but this particular wine you could drink easily at seven to 10 years, and it's still gonna be vivacious. Lots of rich forest fruits and spices, some hot spices, some sweet spices, and a long, persistent finish. It's a very complex, very aromatic wine. For those of you who really like Ripasso wines or Amarone style wines, you are gonna love Maravita. It really is the Amarone of the South. It pairs beautifully that uh, fruity complexity with the savory saltiness and complexity of the, the, uh, the meat sauce of the lasagna. And here's our 19th pasta dish right here. And this is a very different pasta dish. It's called Macaruna in a spare ribs ragu sauce. Macaruna, for the most part, is sort of a, it's a dialect word for macaroni. Macaruna is basically a home style, homemade pasta, typically on the shorter side, as you can see there. And it's in a very rich, very complex spare ribs ragu sauce. And so I'm showing off here. I, I brought out the big guns. This is another kind of now, but this is the Grand Cru. It's the reserve from the Ataruya estate. It's called Cuentu, which is a Sardinian dialect word, which means tale. I you know, like to tell a story, to tell a tale. 3,000 bottles produced annually by hand. It's a very rare gem, huge body. Uh, you have to decant this wine two to four hours. By the time you get to the three hour mark, all of a sudden, boom massive, massive, big, big red and dark fruits start popping out of this glass. It's very rich and fruity, lots of minerals on the finish, and it's got big, robust power, 15% alcohol. 
it is a, it's an awesome pairing. And so if you're interested in any of the wines in this video, I'm gonna leave you with some links below in the description where you can purchase any of these wines. Just take a look at the description below and you'll be able to get them there. So if you like this video, check out my other Italian food and wine pairing videos and make sure you hit the subscribe button below so you don't miss out on any of the new weekly wine videos every single Wednesday. Until next time, I'll see you in the next video.